Going bald is not something you should try to fight because it's a fight that you can't win. Hello, and welcome back to the Merck Manuals Medical Myths podcast, where we set the record straight on today's most talked about medical topics and questions. I'm your host, Joe McIntyre, and on this episode, we welcome Dr. Wendy Levenbook. Dr. Levenbook is a dermatologist at Hartford Dermatology Associates in West Hartford, Connecticut. Today, we're here with her to talk about hair loss. Dr. Levenbook, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Now, there are a ton of myths, questions, and misunderstandings when it comes to hair loss. Many of us are curious about what causes hair loss, how hair loss is treated, and if hair loss can be prevented. But first, let's start off with a question that I'm sure many of us uh, want to know the answer to. Why do some people experience hair loss? Well, hair loss can occur for many different reasons. Um, The most common cause is aging or genetics, which is also known as male or female pattern hair loss or androgenic alopecia. But there are lots of other causes as well, such as underlying systemic disorders, such as hormone imbalance, other endocrine disorders, lupus or nutritional deficiencies, autoimmune disorders, such as alopecia areata, drugs such as anabolic steroids or medications such as chemotherapy medicines, infection, trauma to the scalp such as compulsive hair pulling, wearing tight ponytails or braids or burns, physical stress such as very high fever or pregnancy or severe psychologic stress. So there are really lots of different causes. Yeah, there's obviously been a lot of talk in the media recently uh, about alopecia because of Jada Pinkett Smith and her husband, Will Smith, and the incident at the Oscars. Can you tell our listeners what exactly alopecia is, and it is it different from regular old hair loss or baldness? So, yes, the term alopecia is definitely being used a lot in the media right now. Um, and alopecia is just the medical term for hair loss. The two are synonymous. Um, alopecia is a nonspecific term that includes many different types of hair loss due to many different causes, in different patterns, and on any part of the body. Baldness, however, is a more specific term that describes diffuse hair loss on the scalp. Now, is the hair that falls out daily in the shower or when brushing your hair a sign that someone's going to have more hair loss, or is that just kind of a natural experience of uh, of living your life? No, that is a natural experience of living your life. So the hair that falls out daily in the shower or when brushing your hair is completely normal. Um, A typical scalp has about 100,000 to 150,000 hairs. And so it's normal for 50 to 100 of those to fall out daily as they complete their growth cycle. Um, And basically hairs grow in three phases. There's a long growing phase called the antigen phase. And this typically lasts anywhere from two to six years. And as an aside, the maximum length that your hair can grow is a function of the length of your antigen growth phase. And this is genetically determined. So, you know, think of Crystal Gale, who had that floor length hair at one point in her career. Um, She must have had an extraordinarily long antigen hair growth phase because most people cannot grow their hair that long. But in any case, um, after the growth phase, there's a transitional phase called catagen which lasts a few weeks. And then finally, there's a short, several months long resting phase that each hair goes through called the telogen phase. And 50 to 100 hairs will reach the end of this phase and fall out each day. And then the growth cycle for those hairs begins again. So when you see a small amount of hair falling out in your brush or in the shower, again, don't worry, this is normal. Now, when you mentioned uh, that hair has a maximum growth length, is, I'm assuming that's why hair on someone's arm or someone's leg or wherever else in your body that's not your head um, kind of stops at some point. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, there is a finite growth phase for hairs, and that growth phase differs uh, at different spots on your body. Do men experience hair loss more frequently than women? It, it seems like they do, but is that just a myth? What's the actual truth there? Hair loss is more common in men, and the reason is that the most common type of hair loss is hair loss associated with aging, and there are lots of different statistics for this, but it's thought that um, this affects over 70% of men and 50% of women over the age of 80. So, So men do suffer more hair loss on average than women. Why do some people start to experience hair loss earlier in life compared to others and some later, um, and then some not at all? What's the deal there? 
Yeah, that's a good question. And the answer is really just genetics and different sensitivities to circulating hormones. Um, some people are just programmed to lose their hair early, some later, and others will never lose their hair. So if we could figure out why this is, we would probably have some great therapies for hair <laughs> loss, and they are working on it. So someone will get to the bottom of that. Is it true that hair loss in men is passed down from the mother's side of the family while hair loss in women is passed down from the father's side? Is that the truth? No, this is such a common belief, and I'm asked it all the time, but it's not true. Uh, male and female pattern hair loss is genetic, but it can be passed down by either one of your parents, regardless of whether you are male or female. So, not true. Got it. Now, how about this one? Can wearing hats cause your hair to fall out? No, also not true. Wearing a hat will not cause hair loss. Um, it's not true that the scalp needs to breathe. And in fact, hats are a great way to protect the scalp from the sun. So I do recommend their use. Now, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about the, um, the importance of shampooing or not shampooing uh, daily. Um, does too frequent shampooing contribute to hair loss? And how about sleeping with wet hair? What, what is, um, what's the deal when it comes to shampooing and sleeping in, um, in wet hair? Yeah, so washing your hair every day will not contribute to hair loss. Um, so that's a myth. As for sleeping with wet hair, that's a little more debatable. Um, the hair shaft is weaker when it's wet, so there might be an increased risk for hair breakage when you're sort of tossing and turning on your pillow while you're sleeping. So I would say that it is probably better to dry your hair before going to sleep if you can. Now, when people suffer from hair loss, does that mean it's permanent or is there a way to grow it back? What are um, what are some of the, the avenues that people use to grow their hair back if that actually is the case? Um, yeah, not all hair loss is permanent. Um, male and female pattern hair loss typically is permanent, although there are other types of hair loss, um, you know, that caused by trauma, some types of hormonal changes, pregnancy, eating disorders, um, other systemic illnesses, that can be temporary. Um, so not all is permanent, but there are things you can do to slow down hair loss or prevent further hair loss. Um, for hair loss associated with aging, there are two FDA-approved medications. Um, Rogaine is approved for use in men and women, and Propecia is approved for use in men only. Um, and then there are hormonal therapies that can be used if a hormonal imbalance is the cause. And then avoiding traumatic hair care practices such as excessive styling, coloring, straightening, or hot comb use can also be helpful to prevent or slow down further hair loss. Uh, I'm sure we've all also seen ads uh, on TV or online about hair growth or hair replacement. Is that real hair? What's the science behind that? Well, you know, it depends on the ad and what they're advertising. <laughs> but, um, you know, there are medications that can induce hair growth or thicken existing hairs, such as Rogaine, Propecia, and some other hormonal modulators. Um, there are also devices such as low-level laser light sources. And then there's a technique of injecting platelet-rich plasma that are thought to grow real new hair. Um, in terms of hair replacement, this usually refers to hair transplantation, where healthy hair follicles are taken from areas of dense hair growth on the scalp and then implanted where needed to grow new real hairs. So, yes, ultimately, new hairs can be grown. How about vitamins like biotin? Uh, I'm sure a lot of people either uh, take these supplements or, or heard of them. Uh, do they help with hair growth? Yeah, a large percentage of my hair loss patients report taking biotin, but there really isn't much scientific evidence to support their use. Um, unless one has a true biotin deficiency, which is really very rare, um, biotin has not proven to be helpful for hair loss. And in fact, taking biotin can interfere with certain lab test results leading to inappropriate treatment and misdiagnosis of certain conditions. So you do have to be careful when you take this supplement. Um, I just typically recommend that patients eat a healthy diet and avoid nutrient deficiencies to help keep their hair healthy rather than take biotin or other supplements. Now, Dr. Levenbook, do some hair care routines contribute more to hair loss than others, other things um, or routines that people should avoid when it comes to treating their hair? Yes. Yeah, so um, there are some hair care practices that are more traumatic to the scalp and the hair shaft 
and that can lead to hair loss, um, such as traction alopecia, which is caused by um, braiding the hair too tightly or wearing ponytails, you know, too tightly, you know, over and over again. Um, and then there are certain practices such as excessive styling, um, hot comb use, um, things like that, that can cause damage to the hair and the scalp. Now, here's a myth that we've seen, I'm sure, in popular culture, and I'm sure a lot of people have seen online. When someone shaves either their face, their chest, their arms, their legs, any other part of their body, does that hair that comes back in, uh, is that thicker than it would be if they hadn't shaved that part of their body? It is not. Everyone does, you know, believe that. Um, and it seems that way because when it comes in at first, you know, it's 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 a very short hair and does seem to be thicker than regular hair, but it but it is not. As it grows out, you know, you would notice that it is the same thickness as all the other hairs on your body. So that is not true. So Dr. Levenbook, as we're closing out here, uh, where should our listeners go if they're looking for resources or more information about hair loss, um, hair regrowth, or, or hair health? So the American Academy of Dermatology has a very good website with lots of good information on there. And then, of course, the Merck Manual um, also has lots of good information. Well, Dr. Levenbook, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this podcast. Uh, certainly uh, a lot of interesting topics and a lot of great conversation about hair loss, hair growth, and how uh, our hair health is important to everybody. I'm sure many of us deal with hair loss in, in some form, so it's great to, uh, to hear from the expert. As we close out, I'll let Dr. Levenbook leave our listeners with the final saying, as we always do. Medical knowledge is power. Pass it on.